Army captain, astronaut, independent senator, Bill Nelson delivers for Florida. Paid for by Priorities USA Action and smp.priorities.org, senatemajority.com. Not authorized by any candidate or candidates committee. Blog Talk Radio. SoundCloud, MixCloud, Podcast.com, Podcast Garden, iTunes, YouTube, 
FM.com, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Reverb Nation, and two or three others that I don't know who puts them up, but somebody else does. I mean, we we are blowing this show out of the water, and it's all because of y'all. I am so, so appreciative of each and every one of you because we are heard in over 200 countries. That means that indie artists, indie, indie authors, anyone that comes on this show has an opportunity to be heard in over 200 countries. Just let that rattle around in your brain for a minute. So you ask, okay, well, I have this, that, the other. How do I get on your show? It's real simple. Contact me on off the chain radio at yahoo.com. You can either be a guest on the show, if you have a book, if you have music, you have a platform, you have a cause, you have a passion. I don't care. You don't talk politics, religion. We'll talk politics and or religion. I don't care. That's what this show is about. Contact me at off the chain radio at yahoo.com. Now, there's another way that you can get yourself out there if you're a little bit shy and kind of feel like I'll eat you for lunch, which I won't, I promise. Uh, not the week to eat humans, maybe next week. You can be a sponsor for the show. And I'm not in it to make a ton of money because I don't believe in it. I believe that, that things come around when they're supposed to. But for $10 a month, I'll run your ad. And you can send it to me either in an MP3 format or you can send it to me in written form and I'll read it. Send it to me at off the chain radio at yahoo.com. I in turn send you an invoice through PayPal. And however many shows I have in that month is how many times I run your ad. If I have to reschedule the show, because as most of you know, my husband is in very bad shape, the ad goes with the show. So you're going to get a month's worth of ads played. If you want to renew the ad or if you want to place another ad the next month, you just send it to me at off the chain radio at yahoo.com. I'll send you a bill and we keep going. And with that being said, I've got some sponsors I need to take care of before we get into tonight's show, which y'all are going to love because she's been on before and I absolutely adore her. Got a new sponsor last night. His name is John Isaac Jones, and he is an author. He's an indie author. And think the notebook, think love story. Because he has a book out called Don't Miss the Duck Springs Affair. It's a romance novel from Southern author John Isaac Jones. It's a fling for the ages. But you got to bring plenty of tissues. He doesn't provide those. Go to Amazon. It's available in paperback, Kindle, and in audio. But you can't go now. you got to wait till left of the show. Also, because of... Australia being our biggest listening audience on this show, there is an author whose book went to number one out of Australia. And she's an indie author. Her name is Diane Moat. And she writes a, the Sam Holden series. The first in the series was called Dog Gone. The second in the series is called Dog Fight. And it goes like this. Wherever a helpless animal whimpers in the dark and wherever the system fails to protect said animal, she'll be there and... Mm, She's not giving up any time soon, so you've been warned. When Sam Holden receives a tip about a brutal dog fighting ring, she embarks on one of her most dangerous acts of vigilantism yet. The monster known as the puppeteer circles Sam's world as she unknowingly circles his. Hmm. While they chase each other, will Sam put those she loves most in harm's way in order to break up the ring? With time running out and animals in need, the dangerous life that Sam's created begins to eclipse any other life she could ever leave. Check out Diane Moat, Dog Fight and Dog Gone on Amazon, on Kindle. No, you cannot go now because you're going to miss the show. The third one before we get into our show, Cece Chamberlain, lovely, lovely woman. She has a podcast called Inside Your Life with Cece. And what she has is a motivational, passionate conversation. When Cece interviews people, she is interviewing those who are living their true purpose, whether it's a professional boxer, an author, a history enthusiast, garbage collector, she doesn't care. What she does is strives to give one hope for a brighter day with her inspirational words. So download, subscribe, and listen as Cece guides you to pursue your dreams and for you to live your best life 
Her beautiful show can be found on podcast.com, iTunes, Google Play, and everywhere podcasts are available. Now, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, and the show and, and everything, this is not my show. It quit being my show about... 110,000 people ago. This is your show. You, the listener, and you, my guest. And my guests are wonderful. They're all, if I could bring them all to the house and interview them in person in my studio, I would love to because they're all amazing. Y'all are all the ones that have made this successful, and I'm very grateful and very humbled for it. And with that being said, my return guest is author Nancy Quinn. She lives in a place that is way too cold in the wintertime for me. If you mention the S word, I run the other way. She was born in Royal Oak, Michigan, but she has lived in many areas of the country. She is an internationally known wildlife artist whose work is noted for its detail and accuracy, and she is the recipient of two World Wildlife Art Championship Awards. Nancy has always had a love of animals and nature, and after college, she worked as a conservation law enforcement duty officer for the state of Florida. Now, why she left Paradise, I don't know. She volunteered her spare time at wildlife rehabilitation centers, bringing their birds and reptiles into the schools to educate children of all ages. Over the years, Nancy has handled many domestic and exotic species, including cougars, leopards, and tigers and always had interesting to- stories to tell about her encounters with said animals. Upon leaving a suburban lifestyle in the metro Washington, D.C. area, now I can understand why she left D.C., to live in rural, are you already Montana. She discovered a new world of exciting and unusual adventures. Encouraged by friends and family ar- alike, she wrote her first book, Go West, Young Woman. She now happily resides on a mountainside in Montana with her husband, daughters, dogs, horses, all kinds of wildlife, where she continues to paint and write about her experiences living in the still wild west. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is still pretty wild up there. Hey, Nancy, how are you, my darling? Oh, hi, Vaughn. I'm just fine. You know, I was listening to you in your introduction, and you have so many talented folks on your show, and I'm really honored to be a part of what you're doing here. Well, you are quite welcome. You you know you know slouch yourself, honey. Remember, <laughs> I have one of your your art pieces that I wear around my neck. <laughs> that's true. That's true, and I'm so glad that you're enjoying that one. It's always had a lot of special meaning for me as well. And what we're talking about, like, well, we'll get into that in a minute. First of all. If you don't, if you, if you have ever watched old movies that were filmed in Montana, and one that comes to mind is my husband loves Lonesome Dove and Return to Lonesome Dove, and we were watching Lonesome Dove where they drive the cattle into Montana, and everybody's going, why in the hell do you want to go to Montana? And I'm I'm watching this, and if they truly filmed it in Montana, I can understand the rugged beauty and and the the insanity of it all it's pretty much the same way as it was in the 18 17 1800s is it not oh i would say yes when you look at the terrain and you look at the mountains you know we're not heavily populated here in montana so we have a lot of open space that's still really very wild and we have a lot of very wild animals that inhabit Uh, all of this area. In fact, on the side of the mountain where I live, we do have the grizzly bear and the black bear and the cougars and wolves, coyotes, uh, foxes, a lot of smaller, you know, type wildlife. And I I honestly live in and among them, and they wander through my front yard. Uh, We have different kinds of encounters with them. We have a, a lovely moose. We call her Lady Moose. And uh, sometimes she even brings her twins through the yard. So it is wild. It is rugged. In a lot of ways, it can be unforgiving. But it's breathtakingly beautiful. And, you know, I recently started a YouTube channel 
and I have some gorgeous videos of the skies, the Montana skies and the sunset, of the rushing waters and the rivers, the, the mountains in general, both in the snow and in the, in the spring and summer. So there's, there's just so much to offer and so much to see if, if you like this more wilderness type of lifestyle. And, and the, the beautiful part is because you do and you know how to live among them without encroaching upon them, which we as a nation do so horribly. We take away their habitat and then bitch because they walk through our yard because they have nowhere else to go, or we kill them because <laughs> they get in our swimming pool because they have nowhere else to go. You you live among them quietly, almost as if you're part of them, you're one with them. And from the things that I've seen, they appear to understand that because – they're non-threatening to you. So far, we, we've we lived here now 11 years, and even though we've had some encounters off and on with, with some rather, you know, larger predators, we haven't had any issues. Now, I really don't want to test that theory um, <laughs> because we recently had a grizzly bear come through the yard, and to be honest, I was quite concerned about the safety of the horses. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily think we'd all stand around together and, and relate in kumbaya, but um, <laughs> they haven't, you know, they haven't really been threatening to us, and I won't threaten them as long as they don't threaten me. So uh, we seem to be getting along really well, and gratefully when the bear came through, we were all kind of, you know, a little shocked, a little frightened, of course. It's, they're very big. They're very dangerous. But he seemed to be much more interested in digging up an ant bed than he was uh, paying any attention, you know, to the horses or the family. But we keep our eyes open, and you have to um, when you live like this. But it's never dull here. There's always something interesting to talk about. And that's the reason I do the books, I write the books, and and uh, create the art, because I love for everybody to be able to experience what we're having. I love to say just come come to Montana and without getting your boots muddy. You can experience everything that we have without leaving the comfort of your chair. And the, the um, my mind just went blank. What you do is you, you continue to draw those wild animals when you see them. And ladies and gentlemen, Nancy's artwork, one of these days I'm going to buy a piece of the artwork. I own a piece of her jewelry and would take nothing for it. But it's, they're so real. Oh, thanks. I, I really do strive for accuracy and to get the details right. I think one of the things I try to do most of all is to sort of capture their spirit or their soul and kind of portray that, you know, on the canvas. But part of that is making sure that they're correct, that when you look at them, they look like they should. And that not only helps educate people about wildlife, but it gives them a true appreciation for it. So thank you. That, that part of my work is pretty important to me, and I do study them in detail. And some of them I'm quite familiar with now, but seeing them in the wild is a tremendous privilege for someone that does my kind of work. So I guess I'm and, in the and, right place. Yes, and, and would it be <laughs> fair to say that seeing them in their natural habitat versus a rehabilitation center or even a zoo that is a faux, faux natural habitat, it, their behavior, A, is completely different, and their coloring, their um, their personalities, everything about them is completely different when they're allowed to be in their natural habitat. You're right. That's true. Um, I have worked with different animals in the rehab centers. I've worked with birds of prey, and I've even worked with and handled uh, cougars and other types of animals. So when you're handling one in a rehab center, it's used to people. They're, they're somewhat domestic. But I always caution everyone that a wild animal is always wild. Even if uh -huh. you've raised it from being young, it will revert to its natural instincts. And so they can't really 
be trusted per se at any time. You get kind of comfortable with them, but I've never been been careless or presumptuous with any wild animal I've handled. But when you do that and then you see a cougar that is passing through the yard or sitting up on a rock or somewhere, you're right. They have a whole different kind of demeanor and they portray a different type of behavior and confidence than when they're used to being handled in, um, you know, in the rehab centers. If it weren't for the 10 feet of snow and the ice and going off the mountain in a car, I'd, I'm quite envious. Ladies and gentlemen, she's got a story. It, it, they had a brutal winter. I followed her this winter, and I'm sitting down here in sunny Florida, and they're in snow up to their eyeballs. And please tell me why y'all went off the mountain in the car. Well, it was it was a uh, really bad snow. We had a lot of ice on and off. You may get thaws, and then it will refreeze, and sometimes you don't have enough snow. So at different points in time, we have a gravel pit right up here by the house, and my husband will get the tractor and take the gravel and actually go out and spread gravel over the ice and snow. And we were in the truck, and even though it's four-wheel drive, we just started to slide. And you get into a situation like that, and it's really hard to have any type of control. Your All four wheels are actually going sideways. So no one was hurt, but we had to try to go back with the tractor and then pull the truck out. Uh, there have also been times when, as funny as this sounds, my husband has become stuck or slid off, uh, off the side of the road and become stuck in the snow, and I've had to take the four-wheel drive truck and actually go down there and he chains everything up and with the truck I pull our big tractor out of the snow so it's it's kind of different it's not a life for everyone and the winters can be quite brutal but if you were here in the summer and I was going to invite you when you made the comment about the snow a lot of people live here seasonally and they come and enjoy everything that we have in the spring and summer, which is just breathtaking. And then when the snow flies, they're gone. And <laughs> believe me, as I get older, sometimes that starts to look a little bit more attractive. But um, I don't think my horses would appreciate it if I just took No, off. they wouldn't. So y'all have and the reverse of snowbirds. We, we have <laughs> snowbirds. Y'all have the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am going to play two ads, and then I'm going to come back. One of the ads, of course, is yours. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing a shameless plug for her because it's my favorite, favorite ad. I can't help it. It is just too cute. So hold on. This is Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest, author, and then artist, Nancy Quinn, and we'll be right back. Do you have cougars on your porch swing? <laughs> Are horses your new best friend? Do your nicest shoes get buried knee-deep in snow as your toes turn blue? Are you bothered by wolves at your woodpile? No, not that kind of wolf. Join wildlife artist and author Nancy Quinn and her family as they discover an exciting new life in Go West, Young Woman, a true Montana adventure. Available online and in bookstores. Or... Visit QuinnWildlifeArt.com for a personalized signed copy. Critics agree, it's a hoot. Hi, this is Winona and Jade inviting you to join us and our wonderful guests on the And I Thought Women's Cave podcast on Blog Talk Radio to learn more about our book, the And I Saw It series, and The Misfit Guides. They're available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com. Or just to see what your ladies are up to, you can find all of that out on www.andwethought.com. So peace and love from Winona and Jade and our books. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you so silly. silly. You silly. Remember Did you write that? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Remember to visit us at andwethought.com. And we are back. This is Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest, author and artist, Nancy Quinn, who lives and thrives in, I don't know how, in the beautiful state of Montana. And we were talking about 
the winners can be brutal and unforgiving. But, Nancy, with that being said, even though the winners are brutal and unforgiving, when the snow starts melting and the days start getting in a, a little bit longer, there's the message of hope of warmer days with flowers and sunshine. And we have an abundance of that. Um, I, I take a lot of photographs that I put through social media, and like I mentioned, I create the videos that show a lot about um, beautiful springtime scenes and different things that we do in the summer. And even the fall is beautiful here with the colors. So you tend to kind of live through with the seasons, and the weather is a big part of your life and how you live it, which in some ways can be really great, and then in other ways it can be uh, a little confining. But I guess, it just deci- I guess it just depends on where your priorities are in your life. And we wanted to try something different for a while, and I'm happy that we did because it also enables me to share it with other people. And, you know, you mentioned in, in your introduction about how Australia – really seems to enjoy your show, that you have a lot of listeners there. And I was really kind of excited to hear that because the book is just starting to get a little bit of momentum and to be heard in other parts of the world like Australia and Germany and France. We and Yeah, so that's, you know, that's very, um, very exciting to hear. And I've been watching it kind of grow and change and evolve. And so the book has evolved into the YouTube channel and and different blogs and and things and I am having a great time with it frankly I didn't realize it was going to begin to turn into what it is and um, in fact Go West Young Woman was nominated for the Will Rogers Medallion Award which you're looking at my notes I'm going to segue into that you just oh, went sorry. right there just, oh, no. what is wrong with me I should just How calm dare down you? I know. I'm sorry. I hear I blew no, your No, 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 because I had it in my notes, and I was going to bring it up, so I'm glad that you did. What is the Will Rogers Medallion Award? Well, it's been around for some time now, and you're probably familiar with who Will Rogers oh, was. Of course. Um, and this is an award that is put out for excellence in writing about the West. And I was just... You know, I'm thrilled with the idea. Now, I don't know if I'm a finalist. Actually, the finalists will be announced any day. But just to kind of be considered and be in the running was was very, um, I, was, I was very honored, you know, for that to happen. And so I'll just have to wait and see where it goes from here. But I'm completely enjoying the book and what it's, you know, how, how it's affecting people. I well, always the, the, wondered. No, oh, go ahead. I was going to say what you do and what you have done with the book and the evolution of the YouTube channel and your blog and your jewelry, which we, I want to talk about next, is you have given people that are not from around them their parts, as they say, a, a insider's look into a part of the country that is still for lack of a better word, mystical. Well, it, it is. It's still very wild here. And what I wanted to do was inspire people, not just with, with the beauty and the stories and what Montana has to offer, but the idea behind the story, which is if you want to change your life, then go ahead and give it a try. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be knocked down. But if you have a dream that you really want to pursue, then then go for it. And and in both of my books, in fact, there's a sequel that's available now called Stay West, Young Woman, which covers the next five years of our story. All Both of the books, the real theme in there is really about hope and pursuing your dreams and not giving up and keeping your sense of humor, which I feel is incredibly important in life. Because if you don't have a sense of humor, which is not only healing, but it some days keeps one sane, you become 
one of the many masses of manic depressive people, suicidal tendencies, feeling of hopelessness, lost hope, and all the other myriad of negative things that we don't need in our life. Because, and there's always, there's, there's a show we watch called, um, yeah, just Scorpio, Scorpion. And, and the, the lead character in the show has a saying, and he says, for every problem there is a solution. And when one can step back and say, okay, for every problem there is a solution, might not be the solution I, I want it to be, but there is a solution. And like you say, keep the sense of humor and understand that all is not lost. Think of the fun you can have. Well, that's true. It's it's so important to enjoy the small moments of every day because in the end, all we really have is the accumulation of all those small little moments. And yes. so I I try to appreciate everything during my day that I see and try to accomplish, even if it's just down to admiring a flower in the yard or enjoying that cup of tea that I really like or, um, you know, smiling about something that I find humorous, you, you've got to find those little tiny joys because they all add up, and the problems will always be there, and you have to keep chipping away at them and finding solutions, but if you don't mix it with the other aspects of joy in your life, it's not going to be a happy one, and, you know, we all have a limited amount of time. So I like to try to to use it as wisely as I can, if that makes any sense to you. <laughs> and, oh no, trust me, you're you're preaching to the choir because you know where I am at in my life, and and there mm-hmm. are some days that that I want to pull my hair out. But then there are those, like you said, those moments in time that are so funny, especially when he's in an ambient induced coma and trying to be make a coherent sentence, and it comes out something entirely different, and I have no <laughs> idea what it is. And you, you have to laugh, you, because if you yeah. don't, Nancy, I, I really believe if you don't, if you don't maintain a sense of humor or a sense of calmness and, and peace within yourself, that you're wasting not only your life, but the life of those around you. You are, and and it's easy it's easy to get lost. So you really do have to try to, like you said, sort of stay focused on on finding that little bit of laughter and finding those joys in your day. And I know I try to live that way. And and when you put up the pictures of Wilson and Whiskey, I just want to reach through the computer and just grab them and hug them because it makes me miss my Pintos, my paint so bad, not Pintos, my paint so bad because – my mama would put her head in the crook of my arm and go to sleep. That's how rotten no. she was. <laughs> she was a she was something else. But you have the second book, which is Stay Wished, Young Woman. So I am taking, I am assuming by that title, we know what assume means, that you're staying wished because it suits you. It does. It does, and uh, the first book was roughly the first five years. The second book is is the next five years, of almost to the present time, because it's just been released. It's only been out a short time. It's on pre-order now. You can also get it um, through Amazon. In fact, the ebook isn't up yet. The ebook will be up in just a few days, so it's just brand new coming out. And we did decide to stay. A lot of people don't. A lot of people spend a few years and decide it's really not for them, and that's fine. But we decided to stay on and continue to, to work this homestead and live this kind of life. So it's, it's, still, it's still pretty exciting around here, and I really enjoy the fact that other people can kind of live our life along with us a little bit and, and see what it's like and get a, get a view or an idea. And it's interesting because some people have said, that really sounds great and like something I may want to do. Other people have read the book and said, thank goodness I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so so what it, it will affect, you know, affect them either way. So I know you're not going to quit writing. So what, what have you got next on your 
storyboard or in that little head of yours. You should write a book about whiskey and, and Wilson. Well, I I very well might do that um, because they've had some kind of interesting lives on their own before they came to live with us and then their rehabilitation and, and bringing them back to health, uh, you know, physically and emotionally. And those are stories in themselves. I'm currently a few chapters into my third book, which is about my experiences handling all these different kinds of wild animals that I have dealt with um, in my career. And the book actually starts telling stories from when I was about 19 years old and just getting into wildlife and conservation law enforcement. So it's, it's going to go back in time a little bit, but some of the stories are hysterically funny. And Oh, I can't wait. Some, yeah, some of them will just, you thought some of these were funny in my book now because you know how I look at things with a sense of humor. So, uh-huh. But some of the things that happened in dealing with wildlife law enforcement and just dealing with the animals themselves are, yeah, they're, I couldn't make that stuff up. That's, <laughs> well, that's well, how funny it is. It's like, what, yeah, she couldn't make up a story like that. If someone is not an animal lover or an animal empath, because there are those those people that are animal empaths, and mm-hmm. what people don't understand is animals will talk to you if you pay attention. You can learn their language if you pay attention because they have an abstract language. And when my mother, when my brother was was born and with the retardation, he couldn't talk. And this is what a wonderful therapist, God love her, if if she wasn't dead, I would tell her how much she helped my mother. She was a pioneer in her field, but she said that he had an abstract language like the animals do. And once you hone into that abstract language, you can carry on a conversation with them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, my husband always laughs and calls me Doctor Doolittle and all these names <laughs> because he'll he'll say he'll he'll the animals will do or say something and he'll look at me and go, what, what are they saying? What does that mean? And I'll, well, I think they mean this, you know. And I'll just and he'll look at me and go, you know, how do you do that? And you just I don't know. You just know. It just sort of comes to you, and it, I think it comes to you from from communicating with them a lot and handling them a lot and and understanding their their basic how they're basically made up in their thought patterns but but they're like people like individuals and they they all have a different quirk or a different thing about them and if you're really listening and paying attention I think you can understand and communicate with with animals quite well well I have a real quick story to tell you and then I want to talk about your 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 jewelry I was standing outside the garage, and I was, I guess I had just put trash in the in the trash bin, and there's this little squirrel, and he's on the driveway. And I'm just standing there talking to him, asking him how his day is going and what he had going on for the day. And the next thing I know, this little booger's running up my leg. <laughs> I just stood I very it. still. I let him run up my leg, and he hopped over on the, the fence that encloses the, the trash bin, and I said, okay, so I was your, your climbing post today. I thank you for that. Go and have a nice day. And he looked at me and turned around and took off. Sure. It's it's amazing, you know, the, the interactions that you can have and, and what they understand, although he sounded a, a bit fresh to me. Do you think he was? <laughs> <Really? you know? laughs> Ran right up my leg. I'm standing there. Okay, yeah, well, well oh. Kind of and a, he was just—he was a young one. He he, because they're all over my yard, and he was young, but he had no fear. And we were just carrying on a conversation. And the next thing I know, he needed me to be his climbing post. You might want to tell him next time that it's it's slightly inappropriate for a gentleman to behave that way towards a lady <laughs> on their first meeting. And what, now when I go out in the yard and he's out there and he hears me, he'll turn around and look at me and we'll carry on a conversation. Then he scampers off. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Never had a pet squirrel before. Then I have a crow that sits up in a pine tree next to our fence, and we communicate all the time. But isn't it sweet, and doesn't it just, again, one of those joys in your day that kind of makes your life a little bit better? You know, I think so. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of making my life better, ladies and gentlemen, this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman who I absolutely adore 
who was so nervous the first time she came on my show, and now she's a pro. <laughs> and she will be back. I promise she'll be back because I love her stories. Anyway, she makes the most beautiful jewelry, and it's called Bird of Prey, and it's necklaces, and it's Bird of P-R-A-Y. And what she does is she sculpts a bird of prey, like a falcon or an eagle, and puts it on top of a cross. Now, I'm going to let you continue with the story because I'll get too emotional. <laughs> well, you know, there there was a time off and on um, in my own life where I wasn't doing so well with my health. And I relied a lot on my faith. And so I liked the idea of, you know, how people will wear a cross or they'll wear something that's, you know, it's kind of a symbol. It's a physical reminder, uh-huh. basically. And so I thought, I remember how much how much it helped me, and I thought I really should make these available to other people. So I, I love, of course, the birds of prey. They're a favorite of mine, and you explained the concept very well. And I thought, well, if I have them kind of holding um, a different style of cross or something in their, in their talons, and I designed these pieces. But the idea behind them is just a physical reminder of your faith and that you're not alone, and to provide comfort. It's really important to me that every piece of art that I draw or paint or a piece of jewelry that I design or the books that I write serve a purpose in affecting somebody's life for the better. And, you know, over these years, I've collected a a few handful of of stories of people that write me and say how and why it did make their life better. And that's what keeps me going, and that's what keeps me motivated, because I just feel like it's my purpose, that I'm here to be inspiring and helping and providing comfort to people in the only ways that I know how, which happens to be through my art and writing and things and creativity. So, yes, um, I'm glad that that when you wear it, it gives you a special feeling and helps you in some way because that that's my purpose. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and and what what to me, ladies and gentlemen, when when I, I saw the jewelry when she posted it and. She says, I only have limited amounts, and I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm going to just jump right in the deep end, and if if they're all gone, I'm going to beg her and bribe her and send voodoo or whatever, because (laughs) at at that point in my life, like she said, it's something physical, and I'm, I'm very particular about my joy, and I've been looking for a cross for a very long time, and and before the show, I told her, I said, to me, it symbolized the cross part was the the willingness for another human being to lay down their life for mankind, even though it was painful and it was cruel and it was inhumane. He was willing to do that. The bird on top, and she has they're they're called bird of prey, P R A Y. The bird on top, to me, symbolizes the freedom that comes from giving everything over to faith, to hope, and that when we leave this place, we're free. Well, even we even soar if you above the clouds. It, yeah, even if you think about it on, you know, on earth in general, the nature, you know, nature has the ultimate freedom. Yeah. And they they just live their lives as they do. I've always been enamored with birds and i love the birds of prey and and everything that they represent and how they live and when you see them we have golden eagles that are Ooh. a nesting pair behind the house and in fact i did a a limited edition uh painting of the golden eagle and when you watch them soaring through the air and just observing everything below them and how the wind currents pick up their wings and they just kind of hover, and it, it's so mesmerizing to watch them. And you've got to admit that, it, I mean, that is like the ultimate freedom. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, 
and to me, my mother always said, Yvonne, why do you like to ride motorcycles and horses? And I said, Mother, there is nothing like the feeling of that 2,000-pound machine or 800-pound machine or however big it is under you or that one-ton, four-legged creature under you and the wind in your face, and it's just you and them. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... It's a little hard to explain unless you've experienced it. You know, as an author, I should probably have some really glowing uh, words and descriptions for that, and I bet if I sat down to think about it, I would. But but I understand what you're saying as far as the the feeling that it gives you, and, and those were some of the things that I was trying to portray in, that, in the piece of jewelry that you have. And all of that is it's solid sterling silver. And I import the chains from Italy because I honestly think they make the best ones. Um, it's beautiful. Oh, ladies, yeah. I'm telling, ladies and gentlemen, when we get off the show, you can't go now because you're going to miss the show. But she has a few pieces left, and she has a Celtic cross, she has a Star of David, and she has a regular cross, and they are absolutely breathtaking. And when you put them on I can't describe the feeling Nancy it's I'm already a peaceful person because I've, I because of my faith I am a peaceful person but it just adds that extra layer of peace and hope. Well, you know what I do I, I imagine some people would sort of laugh at me but um, I send out a little card you remember the little card that came yes gifts wrap them and put them in the card and I actually do have a little uh, prayer over each one before I send it to you. Well, I and think that's marvelous. I love it yeah, because I the prayer travels with forever. the peace. Yeah, I I think it I think it matters. Yeah. Of course it does, and and <laughs> especially now with with my life the way it is. That that day I received that my girlfriend is here, the one that stays with my husband while I do the show, and I said I want you to look at this, and it took her breath away. Well, I'm I'm very honored to hear that. Thank you. So, see, ladies and gentlemen, this woman not only are her are her paintings and her drawings just so lifelike. Her jewelry will just embrace you and wrap you up like a warm coat, and her books are so educational, inspirational, and entertaining that you can't help but love her. Oh, my, thank you so much. <laughs> I only speak the truth. I know, but now you see I'm. it's a good thing this isn't television because I'm all blushing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people. I make men <laughs> blush. <laughs> but I only speak the truth. Well, truth is relative. I only speak the facts, and the facts are those. That that it's just the way it is. Now, one of your favorite authors that I found out about you is mm-hmm. James Hero, and and I don't know why I should be surprised that that author is one of your favorite authors. And for the folks that don't know who James Hero is, you want to tell them? Well, yes. Um, I've always been a huge fan. I actually pronounce it Harriet, so some people might have might have heard it as James Harriet, but you may very well be right. Um, But I've thoroughly enjoyed his stories, even as a child growing up. He was a veterinarian in uh, the Dales over in the U.K., and a very rural vet, and he took care of dogs and horses and cows and sheep and pigs, and, and he always had the most entertaining stories about them. Some of them were very funny. Some of them were, were sad. As you know, a veterinarian's going to, you know, life is sad and we have to face uh-huh. sad things. But I always enjoyed his portrayal of the way that he lived. And books have had such a profound effect on my life, on my perspective, even at times when I were, was really lonely, they were my best friends. And so... I've always enjoyed books and other people's experiences, their true life experiences, and I tend to be partial to 
towards nonfiction. I really enjoy other people's experiences in life, and I've learned a lot from it. And so, yes, I, I always found him very inspiring and loved those stories growing up, and I still do. And now you're living the dream. I am. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? I, as an artist, I never thought I'd become an author, and it's a relatively new career step, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And now that the second book is coming out, I'm beginning to feel more like one. You know, the first one came out, and I don't know, I was very excited, but I, I guess I thought it was kind, some kind of a, like a flash in the pan or whatever. Um, but now that my second book is coming out, I'm beginning to feel more like what a real author would feel like. And don't ask me what that is. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. I've been writing for so long. I don't know what a real author feels like. And <laughs> you, you like a series that is my drug of choice. I found that out when I did my deep dive on you. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Oh, yes. Another reason to love Australia. Um, I really enjoy her uh, her movies. I know they're not making them anymore. I've seen all of them, and they still continue to be one of my favorites. Fact, I want I to be talk- her when I grow up. Do you know that I dressed up like her for a Halloween party? No, you did not. I did. <laughs> she is so, um, I told my husband, I said, honey, I want to be her when I grow up. And he laughed at me. He says, you are her. What are you talking about? (laughs) Well, you know, I did investigations for a while um, when I was in law enforcement for the state of Florida. When I left the game commission, I went over for um, environmental protection and worked in their investigations unit. So I love to track down all the small details and put together the Uh puzzles, and I'm Uh just kind of naturally really enjoy that. So, so yes, the, I loved that series because it was just fun. And I love lots of mysteries. We're watching the Midsummer Murders uh, so am I. mysteries right now. Yeah. And uh, have love you seen them. Dr. Blake? Dr. Blake Y'all came out of Australia. Is that good, too? Oh, it's great. You have to get the Dr. Blake uh, mysteries. You're going to love those. I'll have to find him. Because yeah, you when have, I run out of when I run out of when, when I run out of Miss Fisher murder mysteries, I don't know what. Hey, Australia, tell your people we need some more of her because she is so we amazing. Do. They do come up and, with some good mysteries and great ginger ale. Do. They have a ginger it, beer out of Australia that's wonderful. I have to try that too. Mm-hmm. See, it, 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 uh, hey Australia, and they also you know, you know that I promote. Um, they're, they're, they have a blues band that exploded after we started promoting them called the Teskey Brothers. I swear they could be on Bourbon Street. They are Eric Clapton and Johnny Lang and B.B. King and Robert Johnson all rolled into one. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, you have to look them up. They're absolutely amazing. Love those guys. Now they've just exploded. I would stand in line to go to their concert, and I don't stand in line for anybody. People stand in line for me. But <laughs> but I, I read Miss Fish, and you like Midsummer Murders. I mean, see, if you ever come to Florida, we'll just binge watch our favorite shows. We will. In fact, I will bring all of my, my copies of the ones you don't have. So if you haven't found Dr. Blake by then, I'll bring that one. <laughs> Sweet. I've got a few others that you would probably like that, that I really enjoy, too. So I, I do enjoy those those programs they're a lot of fun oh, that would that would be a lot of fun so you could come and and you're from here so you know you know it's paradise i don't have to tell you how much paradise it is i am i've lived in all different parts of the state i've lived in north florida and central and further south and uh spent time in the keys i've been all over florida mm-hmm. now key west is my favorite florida city it, except when i go to to casadega i haven't been to casadega yet but i'm that's on my bucket list well, Florida has much to offer. It's yes, it it's does. really okay. uh, it, it's a beautiful place. I miss the beaches. I have to say, I, I always love to go along and collect the shells and things. And I haven't I'm done that. I'm ten minutes. I'm ten minutes from the beach as the crow flies. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that would be so nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you could just come and go to the beach. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a moment here. <laughs> <laughs> now, you will come we back, need to get right? back to business, Yvonne. Yeah, I know. No, wait, this is business. What are you talking about? You will come back, won't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, I, I promise you that when I don't know when I'll come to Florida, but I will because I still have a lot of family there. So I'll be back at some point, and I promise you, I'll give you a heads up and let you know I'm heading your way. Lovely. But you'll come back on the show as because you're now one of my regulars. People wait for you to come on the show now. Oh, really? Oh, well, I yeah. would love that. Of course, I will come back anytime you want me. Sweet. We'll do it after the first of the year. Now, before we run out of time, because we are getting down to the wire here, as usual, Tell these I don't know how that happens so quickly. I know. Go figure. Tell these lovely folks where you can be found, my darling girl. Well, I am an author with Hellgate Press, so if you contact the publisher, of course, you can find me there. And I have a website, which is quinnwildlifeart.com, and from there you can find the YouTube channel, which has some really neat videos, I do have a series called High Noon Tea where I recommend my favorite teas and I answer questions from people that write to me or I talk about events and different wildlife encounters and things that happen to us on Life on the Mountain over tea. So that's kind of fun. Uh, you can have also a link to anything about the books or, or the blog or any other information you need from there. The books are sold online through Amazon. You can find them in any bookstore. Um, I'm at Barnes & Noble on the 21st of this month, in fact, in Bozeman, Montana, so I do travel around and do some book signings. So I'm not hard to find. And she is on Facebook, and if, if y'all are my friend on Facebook, just go to my friend's list and find Nancy Quinn and, and pop her a friend request, and she'll she'll accept it. My I will. Also, I have a fun little group on Facebook called Creative. Um, um, what is it called? It's my group. I should know what it's called. Oh, Creative <laughs> Country Lifestyles with wildlife uh, artist and author Nancy Quinn. That's me. So, yeah, join the group because we have a great bunch of folks there, and everybody's always talking, and I put up a lot of posts about what's going on. So that's a lot of fun. See, she's everywhere. She is everywhere, and she will come back. Don't hang up when the show goes dark, but I want to thank you so, so much for spending an hour with me. You have put a smile on my face and made me laugh, and, and that means a lot right now, and I appreciate it so, so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that there are several things that I say at the end of the show, and I live by those, or I try to. I'm not always perfect at it because none of us are perfect, but one of the things I say is people will forget your name. They will forget what you look like, they forget what you're wearing, but they will never, ever, ever, ever forget how you made them feel. And we all are on a journey, and sometimes that journey is very difficult. It has its bumps in the road and its detours and its roadblocks, and sometimes it's a dead-end wall. So when you're out and about, and even though you're on a journey yourself, try to make someone else's day a little bit brighter by saying something nice about them, whether it's their smile or their hair or even if they're frowning, tell them that you believe they have a beautiful smile and they can't help but smile because it's contagious. Because when, when you leave them, they will remember that throughout the rest of their day and they'll go home and tell their family. And as Nancy and I have talked about tonight, don't if you want to achieve greatness, don't ask permission because nobody's going to give it to you. Just go out and do it. If you want to go to Montana, go to Montana. You fail if you don't. The failure is not in, in not succeeding because you succeeded because you went. The failure is not even trying. Am I right, Nancy? You are. You are. And I would hate to think that anybody would, in time, have regrets because they didn't try. That, to me, and that's almost a tragedy, you know, is the fact oh, that... Oh, it's a sin. It, it, yeah. it should be punishable by death, immediate. <laughs> but any, anyway... Wow, you're pretty anyway, harsh. Anyway, ladies... I know I'm terrible, Lorna. Uh, just, ladies and gentlemen, live your dream because, trust me, it's like Nancy said at the end of your days, don't be a shoulda, woulda, coulda. Don't be that person because we only go Well, don't even once. be that person before the end of your days, you know. Exactly. When you, when you wake up, yeah, when you wake up in the morning, you should be kind of thinking, 
you know, thinking the more positive thoughts and thinking about what you want to achieve and what your purpose is, because we all have one. And she has just closed our show for us, ladies and gentlemen. I love it when my guests do that. It's so amazing. <laughs> we will be here again tomorrow night when we have the And I Thought ladies with us. They are absolutely hysterical. So join us at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here at Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest and friend, author, wildlife artist, Nancy Quinn. And we t- say to you, live, love, and be happy And we wish you a good night. Good night. Thank you. Now, we're off the air, but you know that when the show archives, I'm going to put the link up on the page and tag you in it, and you're going to take it and run with it. And then tomorrow when I put it up on all those podcasts, I'm going to put the link up and tag you with it. So you can go and spread your wealth around and let everybody listen and share. Well, I'll be be really happy to look for it. And, yes, I'll I'll definitely be putting it out there and – Hoping everyone else enjoys it, too. Uh, you, they have to. I mean, they keep coming back for more. <laughs> I know. I just felt I stumbled around a few times trying to uh, – my pulse like, just goes faster than my brain. I don't know. <laughs> Nancy, my tongue gets tied. I, it, it, it's live radio. It's no big deal. It's what makes <laughs> it fun. <laughs> you well, know it was me? fun. I do have to say that. We, we, we had a good time. I did. And you're coming back, You're consider yourself a regular on the show, even if you don't have a new book out, just to come back and talk about what's going on because people want to know about the state of Montana and the, per- the person that lives in it. See, I can't talk. <laughs> well, I would really be thrilled to do it. I enjoy your program so much, and I think so well of you, and, and I'm happy to be a part of what you're doing. So, yes, I would love to come back whenever you want to have me and, there's always news from the mountain. I mean, there's, there's always stuff. Hey, about. that's there's what we'll stories. name the show when I bring you back. News from the oh, okay. mountain. I yeah. like that. And See? there's plenty of it. <laughs> oh, See, that's oh. great. That's, I mean, we get, you know, I had a, a bird come into my art studio that I talked to for a while. I, I featured it in High Noon Tea. I've got birds coming down the chimney i've got bats in the house i've got grizzly bears in the front yard i mean there's always something to fill our time believe me i will have so much fun yes we're going to do this again next we'll do it after the first of the year because the rest of this year is all filled up we'll do it at the first of the year well good put me on your book and let me know okay my darling thank you thank you so much and and you have a pleasant evening of what's what's left of it it's saying you too and just I'll keep you in my prayers, and please keep me and my husband in yours. I have been, and I will continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. We will talk okay, later. Good night. Good night, honey. Bye. Bye bye. Progressive presents Get Pumped Inspiration to help you do insurance stuff. Okay, time out. You're going to let your budget be the boss of you? Take control with Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Tell us what you want to pay for car insurance, and we'll help you find options that fit your budget. Here's some music to get you pumped. Da dong da dong da dong da dong dang dang. I hear your budget laughing at you. Oh wait, that's just those kids laughing at me. Ignore them. Da dong da dong. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.